The classical view is that the long run aggregate supply curve is vertical. And to explain the reason for that, we can run through what classical economists believe should happen to the economy in response to a shift in aggregate demand. So if aggregate demand was to shift to the left, we can see there'll be a movement along the short run aggregate supply curve to a new equilibrium at lower price level and lower output. So as we'd, as we'd expect, reducing aggregate demand brings down inflation, brings down real GDP, and therefore most likely employment levels will fall as well. But over time, higher rates of unemployment put downward pressure on wages as workers' negotiating position gets weakened by an abundance of available labour. Basic analysis of labour markets would tell us that lower wages increases the quantity of labour demanded, which will increase employment and bring the economy back to full employment, back onto the vertical long run aggregate supply curve. And that same process would actually happen in reverse if aggregate demand was to increase as well. So with increasing output and employment in the short run, but rising wages this time, causing the economy to readjust back onto the vertical LRAS in the long run. But the Keynesian view is that the long run aggregate supply curve actually takes this kind of backwards L shape with horizontal, upward sloping and vertical sections. And the main reason for this was his view that wages are sticky downwards. He argued that it's too simplistic to say that in terms of high unemployment, wages would simply be able to adjust. Workers with contracts won't simply accept the lower wages because aggregate demand has fallen. Trade unions, collective bargaining and minimum wage legislation will all make this process even more unrealistic. And so under the Keynesian model, aggregate demand falls and the economy can settle in equal equilibrium, even in the long run, at a lower le level of real GDP than the full employment level of output. So on our diagram, this is the full employment level of output and the economy has come to settle at equilibrium at a lower level of output than that. If we bring aggregate demand down to a very low level, we can also explain the horizontal part of the curve as well. And the argument here is that when output is so low, resources are underutilized and it's possible to expand output without putting upward pressure on the price level. So you can see aggregate demand can shift to the right and price level doesn't increase. But as greater scarcity starts to kick in, expanding output further starts to become more difficult, the curve becomes upward sloping. And the traditional trade-off between growing real GDP and keeping inflation under control returns. Until a point where Keynes agreed that the long run aggregate supply curve does become vertical when the economy is operating at its full productive potential.